and we start. So uh, the title of lecture is uh, Mammoth Hunters of Dnieper Basin, Human Environmental Interaction at the End of the Last Glaciation. Okay. Uh, so uh, if we talk about uh, the climatic zones of Eastern Europe, so we can see on this map that uh, the vast territory of Europe and Asia was covered by such called mammoth steppe. Uh, but uh, by the works of uh, paleogeographics, uh, we uh, can say that inside in the frames of this uh, vast mammoth steppe, there was uh, several uh, geographical regions, zones, uh, especially inside the Eastern European plain. So we have the zone uh, of wet uh, conditions uh, directly, uh, directly behind the uh, glacier. After we have the zone which uh, marked by uh, the, this rectangle, it is a vast zone of so-called tundra forest uh, formation and uh, the more uh, southern territory, which uh, we call uh, periglacial steppe zone. And in accordance of uh, this uh, different geographical zoning, we have a zoning of uh, different faunis, faunal uh, complexes. So uh, at the territory of Eastern European plain, we uh, defined two uh, big uh, faunal uh, territories, two big faunal uh, zones, uh, southern and northern. And uh, while the, uh, in these zones, we have the different predominance of faunal remains on the sites. On the sites of the uh, northern zone, uh, we have a predominance of uh, mammoth fauna, mammoth remains, and uh, also the, uh, we have uh, the occurrences of mammoth fauna in different uh, pale paleontological sites. Uh, at uh, southern zone, we have the predominance on sites and in paleontological sites, locations, we have the predominance of uh, bison and a horse. Uh, and also on the territory of uh, uh, Carpathian region and uh, uh, big valley of Dniester, on the sites which belong to the uh, second half of Upper Paleolithic, uh, we uh, found the sites with the uh, domination of reindeer in the fa faunal remains. So uh, that is why <clears throat> several, uh, several domestic uh, scholars uh, defined uh, different types of adaptations uh, to different uh, climatic and faunal zones of, of the Paleolithic humans. So uh, they used uh, ethnographical term such as uh, such as economical and cultural type, uh, and uh, our uh, professor Mikhailo Mikhailo Gladkich used this ethnographical term to describe uh, different ways of adaptation uh, in different uh, zones of Eastern European plain. So uh, uh, in uh, this case, uh, we can see that we have uh, sites with the predominance of uh, mammoth, uh, also the sites with the predominance of bison, and the sites of the predominance of reindeer. And that is why they were used uh, such terms as mammoth hunters, reindeer hunters, and bison hunters. If we talk about uh, mammoth hunters, there we can see the uh, uh, spread of their sites uh, mainly on the territory of the Dnieper Basin. Uh, Dnieper River is a vast uh, arteria, water arteria, uh, which uh, flows uh, directly from the uh, edge of uh, continental glacial shield. And uh, this uh, valley, valley of Dnieper River, uh, was formed uh, uh, while uh, the last Pleistocene and Pleistocene Holocene transition. And uh, the majority of mammoth sites uh, we see inside this vast uh, basin, Dnieper basin. 
Uh, and uh, we can say uh, that uh, in, uh, at that time, uh, nearby the glacier, we have uh, such, uh, uh, such uh, phenomenon as a glacial lake, uh, the so-called Polissia glacial lake, which covered a vast territory of floodplain of Pripyat River. And on this territory, on the vast territory of uh, Pripyat, uh, we have not any evidence of upper Paleolithic sites at all. So uh, among the majority of uh, sites of the so-called mammoth hunters, we can define uh, several uh, groups uh, which belong to different uh, technological and cultural complexes. Among them, we can define Gravetian complex, Epigravetian complex, uh, Several sites we can define as an epi orinocene complex and even uh, final Paleolithic. So, uh, if we uh, say about the earliest stage, uh, we can uh, more summarizing, tell, telling about the two stages of mammoth hunters. This is the first stage is connected with Gravetian complex and uh, it. Uh, mm, uh, distributed in such sites as uh, Miragosha, Lipa, Radom, Myshlkerilivska, uh, Klusy, Pushkari, and others. Uh, and uh, we can say that uh, here we, we marked uh, especially Gravetian sites. And uh, we can say that uh, that is not directly Eastern Gravetian, but the sites which are in the more uh, wider frame as just a Gravetian sites with uh, with uh, some specifics of technology technology inside them. So we can say about the Radomushl industry, uh, Molodova industry, Pushkari industry, and so on. Uh, it's clear for today that we have a, some chronological gap uh, between uh, the latest Gravetian sites and uh, further Epigravetian sites. So here we can see uh, some uh, datations, not calibrated datations, between uh, which uh, mark we have the uh, Gravetian sites uh, which existed uh, directly in uh, the time of uh, LGM last glacial maximum, uh, and the last uh, datations of the Gravetian sites uh, not uh, more younger than 19,000 BP, not calibrated. Uh, this is such sites as Kirilipska and Pushkari 1, which are dated in the frames of 19, 20,000 BP. And after we have a chronological hiatus, the absence of um, sites uh, of, uh, and only from the 15,000 BP, we can uh, see uh, the some fanning of culture, uh, which present of different groups of epigravetian. Uh, this uh, gap, this hiatus chronological between the latest gravetian and uh, first epigravetian sites, uh, can be the marker of uh, depopulation of the territory, which may be connected with the last glacial maximum. But in fact, uh, this depopulation was occurred after uh, LGM. And after 15,000 BP, we have a different groups of Epigravetian, uh, which uh, represented by such uh, known sites as uh, Mezin, Gansi, Dobranichivka, and Mezirich. So all of them uh, mostly dated uh, back uh, in the uh, quite, uh, narrow, uh, quite narrow time span. Uh, between 15 and 14,000 BP, but and inside uh, Epigravetian we can define uh, several uh, industries, several types, uh, which uh, have uh, some territorial uh, areas and have some uh, specifics in technology of uh, lithic processing. Among uh, these uh, types, among these Epigravetian types, is uh, so-called uh, late Molodovian, uh, Ovruchian, Mezinian, and Mezirichian, uh, and Yudinovian. Uh, 
Uh, and uh, the specificity of these sites, we can say, uh, we can see uh, the first in the uh, geographical position, in uh, technology, and in chronology. So today we will speak about uh, the Mezherichian group uh, of sites which are placed, which are situated uh, on the territory of Middle Dnieper uh, area and represented by such sites as Mezherich, uh, Dobronichevka, Gantsy, uh, Semenevka 1, 2 and 3, and Buzhenka site. Uh, on this map uh, by red uh, stars market Mezherichian and uh, by uh, blue star is uh, site Mezin, which uh, demonstrate another uh, typology and uh, technology of lytics. And by green star is uh, site of Yudinova on the territory of Russia, uh, which represent by uh, green star. One of the uh, one of the bright specific of Mezherichian is that that uh, all of the sites are situated on the left bank of the uh, Dnieper River by the tributaries of Dnieper, such as Trubezh, uh, Supoy, Udai, and Desna. Uh, and uh, all of these uh, all groups uh, were uh, based, the, uh, their technology were based on the ex uh, exploitation of uh, such type of flint as cani flint. Cani flint is a, a very specific type of flint which can be uh, definited on just visual, because only in this territory, in such such called kind of dislocations, we have uh, the natural sources of this kind of flint. So we have the predominance of this type of flint in directly in Mezherich, which uh, is situated nearby this uh, kind of dislocation uh, in about 20 uh, kilometers from the uh, sources of flint. Also, this flint we can trace in Semenivka 1, 2, and 3. This flint we can have uh, in Dobronichevka site, in Gonsi site, and some portion of this flint found in Buzhenka 2 site. Uh, also, uh, we can say about the unity, uh, not only in geographical position, but also the unity in technological uh, features. So here we can see the table of uh, the comparison uh, between uh, three sites, uh, which we are supposed to be belonged to uh, the Mezherichian. This is Semenivka 3 site, Mezherich site, and Dobronichevka site. So as we uh, see uh, that uh, the weeds of blade, uh, of the uh, blade uh, and uh, blade lets are quite similar. So we can say that uh, the weeds of blade and blade lets is uh, in the frames of eight uh, and uh, 15 uh, millimeters. And quite similar, we can see uh, the character of the uh, blades, unipolar, bipolar, crested, uh, and uh, the types of platforms also, also uh, similar. So uh, this is uh, technological unity can uh, the unity which we can say we can we can trace in geography in technology and in uh, chronology uh, lead us to the thought about the unity of these sites and these sites was the remnants of living activity of the one society also uh, we can, if we uh, will look on the territory of Kanif uh, Dnieper region, we will see different type of sites. So in this region, we have uh, base camps such as Mezhirich and Dobronichivka. We have a temporary camp such as Semenivka 2, Semenivka 3. Also, we have the locations with, uh, with uh, flint deposits, and also we have uh, locations of mammoth fauna, such as Semenivka 1. 
or Kulyabivka or Bespalche. So uh, anyway, uh, we can uh, we have se uh, some uh, functional and seasonal variability of upper Paleolithic sites on this territory. And if we can say about the uh, single society, about the unity, uh, so we can uh, have to, to uh, describe uh, the model of mobility and maybe the model of seasonal mobility and existence of these people on the territory of uh, Middle Dnieper area. Uh, at the time of uh, late Pleistocene. As uh, I can say that, um, as it was said that uh, we have uh, different types of adaptation. We have uh, bison hunters, we have reindeer hunters, and we have mammoth hunters. So uh, if um, bison hunters and reindeer hunters have some uh, some analogies in uh, ethnographical societies and by the uh, several um, scholars uh, there was made a successful reconstructions of uh, models of adaptation of the adaptations of the societies of mammoth hunters and uh, societies of reindeer hunters and bison hunters. So uh, the reconstruction of the living of the mammoth hunters meets some problems. Uh, these problems connected that we have no, uh, we have no mammoth. The first, uh, the mammoth uh, is disappeared, and that is why we have no any ethnographical evidences of mammoth hunters. So that is why we have to analyze more carefully, analyze uh, all uh, the sites with uh, uh, mammoth fauna, uh, fauna uh, remains, and we have to analyze all paleontological locations uh, to reconstruct some specifics of uh, mammoth behavior and mammoth hunters behavior. Uh, so we can start from Mezhirich. It's a quite known uh, site, uh, which, are, which is situated in the confluence of uh, two tributaries uh, of Dnieper River, uh, on the confluence of Rossi River and Rosava River, on the uh, Cape, uh, directly in this confluence. And uh, Mezhirich site is quite known for the uh, good presentation of uh, organic materi materials, uh, good uh, datations, and that this site was opened from 1966. And from that time, uh, different groups of scientists are working here, working there, and uh, we have uh, different results from different uh, these groups. So uh, this site was, was discovered in 1966 by uh, Ivan Pidoplichka, who excavated uh, three uh, mammoth bone dwellings, dwelling one, dwelling two, and dwelling three. Uh, and uh, he made a first reconstruction of the mammoth bone dwelling, uh, which was based on the excavations of the dwelling one. Uh, after uh, the works of Pidoplichko, continued this work, uh, Professor Mikhail Gladkich, who uh, discovered Dwelling 4. And Dwelling 4 still exists uh, on the territory of site in situ. And uh, this uh, made it possible to, uh, to do some investigations and to do uh, annual uh, study of uh, this uh, rested dwelling. So uh, here we, you can see uh, the plan of uh, first uh, dwelling uh, at Mezhirich settlement, uh, excavations by Pidoplichka, and the reconstruction uh, which is uh, exposed in National Museum of Natural History in Ukraine uh, with some uh, different parts, which was discovered directly uh, while excavations. Uh, if we say about the uh, faunal uh, assemblage uh, of Mezhirich, uh, we can see the um, domination of mammoth bones uh, all over the site, uh, Mammothus primigenius, uh, and uh, domination of the hair. Uh, the second uh, species which we have is a hare. Uh, 
Uh, we can say about uh, that uh, this is typical for the mammoth uh, bone structures and typical for, for mammoth uh, uh, hunter sites because uh, the hunting on mammoth uh, is every uh, every time is compounding uh, for the hunting with the hunting of the fur animals such as hare fox, different uh, species of fox and wolverine and wolf or dog uh, because uh, uh, as uh, several uh, as as we think that uh, the skin uh, and the skin of mammoth was not processed it was hard to process and that is why on the sides of mammoth hunters we have the uh, compounding uh, mammoth remains with the remains of fur animals if uh, the sites of bison hunters or uh, reindeer hunters, uh, we can uh, see that uh, uh, such sites as Anetivka 2 or Amvrosivka, uh, the funnel remains represented only by bison uh, without any traces of fur animals. Uh, on the sites of uh, mammoth uh, hunters, we can uh, see that uh, mammoth uh, hunting compared with the uh, hunting on fur animals. Also, uh, also, uh, we uh, have bison, reindeer, uh, Pleistocene horse, bear, wolf or dog, foxes, uh, different, uh, it's a polar fox and uh, uh, two types of uh, foxes, vulpes, uh, and uh, cave lion. Uh, this is a question about the boar. Suscrofa, because uh, maybe the bone of uh, the borer was accidentally uh, trapped inside the excavation, because it was the only the one case of the suscrofa inside uh, the Mezirich excavations. About the lithic assemblage, we can say that uh, lithic technology uh, was aimed to obtain. Uh, bladelets and blades uh, from the cores uh, which have one or two uh, opposite platforms, striking platforms. And these platforms usually have uh, not very, uh, very uh, big uh, processing. So it uh, mostly it's a flat platforms uh, without any uh, facetting or uh, if facetting exists, it's, it's uh, mostly two or three white uh, spals. Uh, and uh, the, the aim of this uh, production was to obtaining a, a small uh, such bladelets and blades. Among the uh, lithic tools, uh, we have uh, the most, it's a burins, uh, and uh, burins divided into burins on truncation, uh, angle burins, uh, dihedral burins, and also the specific uh, mic micro tools, also uh, microlytics, mostly presented by rectangles. Uh, rectangles typical with uh, uh, two, uh, two. Uh, cutting edges and uh, atypical rectangles uh, with uh, only one uh, edge uh, truncation. And uh, it's typical for the uh, sites with uh, uh, mammoth bones it is a vast, uh, the big majority, the, uh, the big uh, uh, quantity of end scrappers. Inside, uh, in some uh, units, residential units, we have the domination of end scrappers uh, over even burins and uh, microliths. So it's a, it is a three uh, imp mostly important uh, tools uh, inside uh, Mezirich uh, site. So different uh, types and uh, is uh, specificity uh, of Mezirich is that uh, that we have the predominance of rectangles in uh, mic microliths, uh, but uh, in other uh, in other epigravetian uh, sites, we have the predominance of uh, points, 
back at points. But in Mizirich, the predominance is uh, different types of uh, back at blades and uh, rectangles. Uh, the technology of lint processing was directly connected with the uh, processing of uh, organic materials. Uh, in first cases, such materials as uh, uh, ivory and uh, antler. So uh, inside the uh, bone material, osteological material, we have such points made, uh, made of uh, ivory and made of reindeer antler, uh, which was used uh, in, uh, as, as a, uh, points for the spears uh, and uh, probably was connected with this uh, microliths. If we say about bone industry, uh, many, um, many uh, tools connected with uh, skin processing, such as needles, uh, owls uh, made from the uh, hair, uh, hair long bones. Uh, and uh, here we can see the uh, jaw, jaw of uh, wolf uh, in which uh, the canines were took out uh, by the prehistoric humans, uh, and uh, nearby we can we found a pendants from the uh, wolf canines. So this is a specific technology to took out uh, the teeth to produce some ornaments. And also uh, we have different uh, different uh, artifacts made from uh, mammoth ivory. Here we have some. Uh, some uh, such uh, flake from ivory, uh, which was engraved with different uh, grooves. Uh, it looks um, like a Mizinian, uh, Mizinian figurine, uh, but uh, I think that mostly it was used as a tool for something. Also, uh, in Mizirich is uh, well known by its uh, different art objects. Uh, we have a schematic uh, figurines. Um, maybe uh, it uh, uh, transmitted an, an, a view of uh, female. Uh, different pendants made of uh, from different uh, things from uh, the teas from the uh, amber and uh, from marine shells uh, also engraved pieces of uh, ivory and different uh, tools or pendants uh, which was used in uh, in the uh, wearing um, we, uh, here uh, you can see the opening of the first dwell dwelling on Mezhirich settlement. Uh, first, first dwelling was opened, uh, was discovered by Mikhail Agladkich in 1978. Uh, 1976, and uh, it still uh, lies in situ, uh, but different groups of archaeologists made their, uh, their study. <clears throat> So while opening uh, this uh, dwelling, this is uh, original photos from 1978. Uh, while opening this dwelling, Mikhail Gladkich marked two distinct uh, cultural layers. And the lower layer was connected with the stage of the building of this construction. And the second upper layer was uh, some, uh, it's, it's 20 centimeters above uh, the lower layer. So uh, as uh, we, firstly, Mikhail Gladkich uh, characterized this site as a multi-layered site. Also, <clears throat> Mikhail Gladkich, uh, focused on uh, the uh, evidences of symmetrical and repeating using of bones in the uh, outer cladding of this dwelling. But uh, Mikhail Gladkich not, Gladkich not excavated inside this dwelling. He left uh, it for the future, for purpose, for future museification. 
<clears throat> next stage of the research of dwelling was connected with the works of Ninel Kornietz, who uh, uncovered this dwelling and <clears throat> take off uh, the upper layer of bones, of uh, bones of the uh, roof uh, followed inside. And she uh, put it in trench inside dwelling, uh, such uh, trench, and started to excavations inside the dwelling. And due to the works of uh, Ninel Kornietz, uh, she found a ser several surfaces inside this dwelling. So uh, on these photos uh, from 1995-1996, you can see the different surfaces on which in horizontal position lies uh, archaeological material. So uh, at last uh, she wrote that uh, inside dwelling she can trace for uh, two, uh, sometimes three surfaces of living. So at last, uh, for the moment, uh, Mikhail Gladkich uh, fixed two cultural layers and Ninel Kornietz fixed several layers inside dwelling. Uh, when we started uh, to uh, work inside dwelling, <clears throat> uh, we, uh, we uh, have the, uh, the deal with this uh, bad dwelling, because uh, from 1978, uh, dwelling four uh, was in open position without any guard. And that is why uh, many bones were stolen and uh, Excuse me, but uh, it was in very bad position. Uh, you can see uh, what we what we had uh, before nine, uh, 2018. So, uh, due to the, our work, due to work uh, of our expedition, we uh, built a new metallic hangar uh, upon the dwelling, and we started to process uh, this dwelling in uh, in order to, with the purpose of uh, restoration and gluing the bones, and partly excavation inside this fourth dwelling. So you can see here uh, the processes of uh, restoration and uh, excavations inside the dwelling. Now it looks like this. So it's quite clean and uh, it prepared for the future works. But uh, while uh, the dwelling was uh, partially destroyed, several bones were stolen. Uh, but anyway, we can see the structure of this dwelling. And <clears throat> due to the works of Paul Hazards inside a uh, dwelling uh, together with us, we can say that we have uh, several types of uh, construction, several, uh, several uh, features such as Funda uh, foundation of the dwelling, which was uh, done by the regularly uh, based uh, mammoth schools. These schools were was deepened in a uh, uh, surface, in uh, was uh, uh, dug in the surface. And uh, the next uh, constructive element is the uh, Auto cladding, auto cladding with, uh, which was uh, mostly made from the flat bones, uh, such as uh, scapulas and mandibles, which are not exist now. And a roof, a roof, uh, now it not existed, but the roof fell down inside dwelling and uh, was represented mostly by ivory. Uh, mostly by tusks and uh, scapulas. So uh, we can say about some constructive elements. And uh, the uh, entrance uh, uh, we supposed is here in the, the southern part of this uh, concentration. And uh, we, have, we, can ha we have a traces of big uh, ivories, big tusks, which fell down. But maybe these big tusks were the uh, elements of arc which we can trace on the first uh, mammoth bone dwelling. 
Anyway, uh, we uh, continue uh, the excavations inside the trench made by uh, in, uh, made by Ninel Corniets, and we started to excavation in uh, opposite parts of this trench. Uh, from the uh, western part and eastern part, and uh, from uh, one uh, from uh, west uh, western part, uh, we uh, have uh, a surface below the surface which was ex excavated by Ninel Corniet. So it's a lower layer inside dwelling with the uh, workshop which we called workshop one. Here uh, we can find, we found uh, more than 3000 of lithic artifacts, uh, mostly it's uh, debitage, uh, several tools, several, uh, several cores. Uh, and this, uh, uh, this uh, workshop one uh, was in a depression maybe artificial depression. Here you can see uh, the stages of excavations of uh, this uh, workshop. And several, several artifacts from the workshop number one. So uh, we can, uh, we have uh, five cores, six cores and uh, fragments of microliths, uh, seven or six burins and uh, several end scrappers. Uh, this uh, workshop one was covered by uh, the uh, specific uh, organic remains, such as the fragments of mammoth ribs. Uh, this frag these ribs were, was artificially cutted trim it, and some uh, this uh, one rib have a marks, regularly marks on its surface, some uh, engravings. And uh, this is the same uh, artifact and uh, uh, nearby 11 centimeters uh, long. Uh, and it was smoothed and narrowed from the both sides. And we have the same object, but made from the uh, mammoth ivory, uh, also 11 centimeters long, smoothed and polished, uh, but made from the mammoth ivory. Uh, this is a very look like these two objects, but made from different uh, from different uh, material. And on the uh, on the uh, this uh, ivory spatula, we have. Uh, almost uh, engravings uh, in such uh, transversal cutting. Another sector which we uh, processed, uh, it is a sector uh, east. And here we found quite a different material. Uh, there was no um, a big amount of lithics, but uh, here we, uh, we uh, found uh, several anatomical groups of small and middle-sized animals uh, together with, uh, uh, together with uh, uh, tools connected with the skin uh, processing owls and uh, needles. So uh, here you can see several parts of uh, animals, uh, vertebras in an anatomical position, also long bones. And uh, here we have different long bones of hair with uh, traces of cutting, of, the, of uh, scratching, and uh, tools connected with the skin processing needles and uh, owls. Uh, so, uh, uh, any dwelling, any dwelling uh, was surrounded by different uh, objects, such as uh, field uh, field objects, different pits, and uh, last time we uh, excavated a pit number six. So uh, the pit number six demonstrates us a very complicated structure. And uh, also here, uh, it's uh, uh, many bones, but uh, many, many fragments of tools and uh, transversally cut uh, transversely cutted uh, ribs of mammoth. 
and uh, we can trace the different stages of the feeling. So uh, we trace Z1, Z2, Z3 inside the pits. This is uh, in pit number six, we found uh, some uh, very interesting uh, composition, uh, half of fox with a limb and skull, uh, which lied on the uh, mammoth scapula and was covered by processed uh, mammoth, uh, mammoth uh, rib. So uh, at last, uh, by, uh, due to the works uh, with uh, pole hazards, uh, we can define at minimum three uh, stages of uh, living on the territory of all sites. So in different uh, objects, uh, in different pits, uh, in different uh, parts of a settlement, we can trace three uh, different layers. And uh, it's a question about chronology because Paul Ezards defined three stages of existing of the whole settlement, settlement in calibrated years from uh, 18 and a half till uh, 17 and a half. So in the, uh, uh, in the frames of 1000 uh, year. But in fact, I not, I'm not believing in uh, such three stages. Why? Because the eldest stage, the eldest stage, you see uh, the red uh, rectangle, uh, the eldest stage dated by uh, only by mammoth bones. So it's a question uh, how mammoth bone uh, can be used for datation of different uh, mammoth sites. Because uh, I think that mammoth bones more uh, give, give us more elder uh, datation than other bones. So at last we have uh, a structure which is oriented on the cardinal dire directions with a complex, uh, complex uh, structure with the uh, uh, main concentration of bones, uh, different field objects such as pits, and uh, area with a saturated cultural layer to the south of the dwelling. And this structure has several uh, at minimum three cultural layers outside and several surfaces inside the dwelling. Uh, for analyzing uh, um, further, we uh, have to uh, give our focus to uh, another side. So we have Mezhirich and Dobranichivka as a base camps with mammoth bone architecture. And we have another site, another group of sites, which has no such huge uh, mammoth bone concentrations and without uh, different field objects. Uh, this is a site of Semenivka, uh, which uh, consists of Semenivka 1, Semenivka 2, and Semenivka 3 site. And uh, the specificity of these sites is that, uh, that uh, these uh, uh, sites are uh, situated on the highest uh, place around the 30 kilometers around uh, on the watershed between uh, such rivers as uh, Trubezh river with Nedra tributary and Supoi valley and the vast Dnipa valley. So uh, this is another location uh, quite different from Mezhirich and Dobrynichivka and Ginci. Uh, so it's a, a location on a high topographically uh, elevation. So you can see here uh, the landscape. And if <clears throat> Semenivka 1 presented by such pillow made from mammoth bones may be gathered uh, around from the surface. <clears throat> and, uh, and also on Semenivka 1, we have the rests of the bear. Uh, and uh, in association with the rests of bear, uh, were found a microlith, blade, flake, and a core. Uh, Semenivka 2 uh, is such concentration of uh, cultural remains and uh, faunal remains uh, presented only by mammoth ribs. 
more clear situation is on the Semenovka 3 side. We have such semi-concentric construction, uh, mostly uh, uh, made of uh, mammoth ribs, and sometimes uh, these ribs uh, um, was placed vertically or sub-vertical position. And mostly concentration of artifacts were inside this circle, inside uh, this uh, concentration, together with the rest of uh, charcoal. And uh, we have some portion of material to the south from the main concentration. Uh, the technologically Semenovka 3 is quite close to Mezhirich, uh, so it belongs to, to the Mezhirichian, but in Semenovka 2 and Semenovka 3 we have the decreasing of the number of uh, end scrappers. In Semenovka 2 there is the absence, total absence of end scrappers. Uh, and in Semenovka 3, we have several, uh, several uh, artifacts which we can uh, name end scrappers. Here, uh, the series of, uh, of uh, several artifacts uh, and scrappers. But uh, another type, another, another categories of tools uh, are represented nearby 30% uh, of uh, burins and 30% of uh, microliths. Microliths are the same as in Mezhirich. So if we compare uh, two uh, sites, uh, uh, two residential units, uh, residential units from Semenivka 3 and residential unit from uh, Mezhirich, we can say about the orientation, all of these sites by the world uh, cardinal directions. Uh, but uh, we can uh, trace uh, many differences between these sites. In topography, uh, Semenivka is high topography, Mezhirich is low topography. Uh, in uh, structure, uh, in uh, existence or absence of pits, uh, field objects, and the tools of skin processing. In Semenivka, there is absence of very rare uh, tools for skin processing. And uh, contrary to that, uh, in the sites of his mammoth bone dwellings, we have the uh, big amount of uh, end scrappers and other tools for skin, uh, skin working. So we can interpret these two sites. Uh, uh, is uh, this site is uh, quite uh, mm, uh, different? We have about we can say about base camp uh, and temporary camp, and we uh, connect base camp with uh, uh, winter time. Uh, while temporary camp uh, we connect with a uh, uh, more uh, warmer type time, uh, as uh, uh, we think that uh, skin processing, uh, wo skin working was connected mostly with a uh, cold uh, period of year. So uh, at last uh, we have uh, such structure for the uh these uh, sites of mammoth hunters uh, we have the sectoral use uh, around the uh, main uh, hairs the sectoral use of space inside dwelling so uh, we have the the, uh, the sector with a uh, lytic processing complex uh, with a workshop and a territory, a part of inside dwelling, uh, which uh, connected with the skin processing uh, functions. We also can see the sectoral use of space uh, in the frames of one residential unit. So uh, around this uh, dwelling in the center, we have the using of space uh, such as uh, different uh, pits, uh, outer, uh, outer uh, workshops, uh, the uh, parts of a saturated cultural layer, saturated with uh, different uh, cultural remains. 
And uh, we have, uh, we can, we can uh, suggest the sectoral using of space around the base camp also. So around the base camp, we can uh, have the mammoth cemeteries. We have silic, uh, silix outcrops uh, when they uh, took uh, the uh, raw material for their tools. We have kill sites and uh, we have temporary camps. So uh, the such model we, uh, we can reconstruct, uh, which, was, which is connected to the uh, different seasonal location, temporary camps, which was organized on the higher landscapes, uh, high, higher topographically uh, higher areas uh, around uh, the main base camp uh, in the most convenient places. Uh, in the terms of uh, uh, raw material, in terms of the prey, in terms of the uh, in terms of the uh, water and other natural sources, and uh, when the weather were uh, good, when the uh, more warmer period, uh, they uh, have to uh, share themselves on the uh, territory. Uh, Around the around the base camp, so if we uh, trace uh, the occurrence of uh, such Mezhirich uh, type of uh, settlements uh, sites, we can uh, say that they were spread mostly on the tributaries uh, of uh, left bank of Dnieper River, and only Mezhirich is one site which is situated uh, on the right bank of Dnieper River. And uh, if uh, uh, we can trace the uh, distances between uh, the lytic outcrops uh, in Kanif dislocations, so we can say that uh, the uh, distance of their um, migration, <laughs> the redislocation uh, was uh, sometimes in, uh, sometimes. Uh, long, such as uh, more than 200 kilometers. Uh, but uh, it is a question, uh, do they know each other? Do uh, these uh, people from Mezherichien know about the existence of uh, uh, closest uh, epigravetian uh, groups uh, such as Mizinien and Yudinovien? Uh, we can uh, see that uh, in different uh, types of epigravetian, uh, we trace such tradition of mating of mammoth bones. Uh, we have Dobranichevka, it is Mezherichian, we have the same structure. Mizinian, we have in Mizin some structure. And Yudinovian, we have the structure also uh, made of mammoth bones. Also, uh, we can say that for these sites, it's typical uh, to produce uh, very stylized uh, female figurines female figurines found on all of these sites. And uh, one of the uh, brightest evidence of uh, connections between different groups of epigravetian is the uh, finds of marine shells, which comes from the Black Sea uh, shore and several uh, such uh, seashells we can find in the sites of uh, uh, Zaporizhia region. Uh, five seashells was found by Pidoplichka uh, in, inside uh, dwelling one structure. Near about 30 uh, marine shells was found in Semenivka 2 site. Near about 130 uh, marine shells were found in uh, Semenivka 3. And more uh, than 600 uh, different shells were found in Mizen, and uh, also too, too much was found in Yudinova site. Uh, uh, mostly of these uh, different uh, seashells uh, was uh, with the hole, which is the evidence of uh, wearing of uh, these pendants. Uh, 
but uh, some uh, some of these uh, shells were without uh, a hole. Uh, among uh, these uh, seashells, we can define dorsanum, we can Theodoxus, Cyclopa neritea, and uh, mostly of them is uh, Nasa reticulata. Nasa reticulata uh, also uh, exists uh, with um, much more uh, present Nasa reticulata uh, comparing to the other types of these uh, seashells. And uh, we don't know uh, how the process of exchanging uh, was uh, between different groups, between uh, different types of these uh, collectives. Uh, maybe uh, they uh, exchange it by their tails songs, myths, and so on, but uh, evidence, archaeological evidence of such uh, communication we have only in this uh, marine shells, which was spread by the uh, basin of the Dnieper from south to north. And uh, if uh, the site is uh, northern, uh, the more, the more uh, pendants we found. And we can say uh, that uh, these uh, epigravetian sites, uh, as you see, uh, green is uh, Mesinian, red is uh, Eudinovian, and uh, brown is Mezherichian. Uh, they uh, mostly were spread uh, during the uh, period from uh, 19 till 16. Uh, calibrated uh, 1000 BP. And uh, the disappearance of these epigravetian uh, complexes was connected with the disappearance of mammoth fauna. And it's uh, arising a question about the role of human societies in the disappearing of uh, mammoth fauna, because as uh, we see, uh, the more uh, funding, uh, more uh, 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 development of uh, mammoth hunters uh, on the Dnieper Ria, uh, river uh, was uh, before, quite before the process of uh, the extinction of mammoth. And uh, at last we can say about uh, several hiatuses, several, uh, several depopulations uh, in the frames of Upper Paleolithic. Uh, the first depopulation was connected uh, with the LGM and it was uh, between uh, Gravetian and Epigravetian sites, uh, the first. And then, uh, after Epigravetian, also we uh, can trace the depopulation because uh, we cannot trace uh, the technological uh, proceedings, technological uh, cultures after Epigravetian uh, on this territory. Uh, no, after uh, final Paleolithic. So this group uh, have no any continuation in uh, technological or cultural uh, terms. Uh, so uh, at last we can say about some vulnerability of uh, human networks, uh, vulnerability from the global uh, climate changes. Uh, and um, this uh, epigravation uh, sites is a uh, clear evidence of this. I have two questions. The first question would be, you showed these female figurines. And I was just wondering uh, what are the attributes or like the uh, things that make these figurines female? Okay. <clears throat> uh, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, we uh, say about female figurines uh, due uh, that, that they have some symbols such as triangle. Uh, but uh, in fact, it's uh, quite uh, uh, complicated to, uh, to see uh, the females in these figurines because maybe uh, these people even don't know that this is a female figurine because maybe they uh, repeated some forms which was uh, appeared uh, earlier 
because in fact, if you looked at Mizinian, Mizinian, uh, uh, Mizinian figurines, uh, it uh, named as a birds, uh, it, it is sometimes phallic uh, figurines. Uh, so there are different interpretation. We uh, name uh, them uh, female figurines mostly due the tra tradition of uh, our scientists. Thank you. And I have just another question also. You talked about the depopulation of the mammoths. Um, and I was wondering how can you um, see this depopulation of um, the mammoths? Is this in fact that there are, are less um, bones or like less um, tools that are made of mammoth bones? Or how if can we, you see that? It is. If we speak about the depopulation, I um, mean mostly the population of mammoth hunters, not mammoths at all. But if we say about the mammoth extinction, so uh, uh, we can uh, trace uh, that uh, the area of mammoth habitation became more and more uh, uh, closer uh, during the Upper Paleolithic, because we uh, in Upper Paleolithic we uh, have not uh, mammoth uh, mammoth uh, fauna at all in Crimea, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, uh, we know that in mid Paleolithic mammoth was in Crimea. Uh, after we have uh, mammoth fauna, uh, datation, datation on ma uh, mammoth fauna uh, on the territory of Stepik Ukraine, at, uh, it dates near about uh, 25,000 BP. But after in Stepik region, we not no mammoth fauna. Also, we have uh, the such multilayered sites as Volodymyrivka, when in the lower layers, uh, gravitian layers, we have uh, several mammoth bones, but in upper layers, there is absence of mammoth fauna. The same situation is on Dniester River. And uh, on the territory of uh, Middle Dnieper area uh, region, uh, about which we spoke, uh, we have uh, the upper limit of mammoth uh, data near about 13 and a half uh, thousand BP uncalibrated. Uh, but at this time, uh, we have uh, more northern sites, uh, such as Yudinova and uh, Pushkari Bugarok, when we have mammoth fauna almost in uh, 11,300 and 11,700 uh, uncalibrated. So uh, that is why the ex uh, disappearance of uh, mammoths was uh, uh, not a rabbit not a rapid. Uh, it was a uh, quite uh, long uh, process. When we speak about the population uh, of people, of humans, uh, we can say that uh, this territory is quite good uh, investigated uh, in the terms of archaeology. And if we have no any site, have no any evidence of uh, human presence during several centuries, uh, during several uh, thousands of years, uh, such as in case of uh, uh, sites between Gravetian, latest Gravetian, and uh, earliest Epigravetian, uh, from 19 uncalibrated till 15. So it's 4,000 uh, years. We have no any evidence of uh, human presence on this territory. Good. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Um, I was really am amazed by your presentation and by your uh, materials. And uh, I think there, there are two late Paleolithic paradise in Europe. The first is uh, West Europe, France, and second is uh, <laughs> East uh, European plain. So it's really, really absolutely fantastic. But I have some, some question. Uh, yeah. is first, uh, is there are some relation uh, between uh, Dniester and the Dnipro Basin in, uh, in Gravetian time, so in, in, in this late Paleolithic, so upper and late Paleolithic time, this is my first question. Because we have two big centers, Dniester and 
Dnipro yeah. basin and uh, how well yeah are there some uh, some relationships between these you see uh, directly with Dnistra we have no any evidence we have no any uh, connections uh, exactly uh, but uh, the latest uh, excavations by Viktor Chabai uh, on the territory of uh, Rovno uh, at Barmaki site, uh, it was proved that uh, we have the earliest epigravetian sites uh, at the western part of Ukraine. So uh, the uh, Barmaki, for, for, the, for the moment, Barmaki is the earliest. And uh, the one territory uh, in Eastern European plain which have no such chronological gap between Gravetian and Epigravetian is Dniester Valley. So maybe in Dniester Valley there was some a trans transition, trans, uh, transition from uh, latest Gravetian to Epigravetian, and maybe the Dniester Valley was a such uh, uh, homeland <laughs> for different Epigravetian groups. And uh, as I know that Vitaly Usik, uh, who processed the sixth layer of the Rashivtsi site, he marked that uh, this, maybe this is our earliest evidence of epigravetian technology, uh, sixth layer of the Rashivti site. But it dates really uh, many, I don't know, ex I don't remember exactly, but near about uh, 20s with something. So uh, I think that uh, in future we will have such connections with uh, Dniester Valley, but for the moment uh, we see a quite different way of uh, organizing of uh, the space. And in fact, uh, we uh, see that such tradition as mammoth bone architecture uh, was mostly connected with the left bank of Dnieper. Mezirich is uh, one, only one site uh, which placed it on the right bank. So uh, Mezirichian, Yudinovian, and Mezinian, uh, Mezin itself, it's a site uh, which are um, belong to the left bank territory. What do you, uh, what do you understand in the term epiorinasian. It's quite a com complicated yeah. question because for yeah. the moment, uh, not even, not me, but even uh, the persons who excavated several epiorinasian sites, uh, not, uh, do not, uh, cannot say uh, the definitive of epiorinian sense. So mm -hmm. for the moment we have uh, on this territory, I'm not uh, going to the stepic region because in stepic region uh, we have epiorinian sense, uh, but uh, also I'm not a specialist in epiorinian sense. But on this territory we have a uh, site of Gordashivka, it's a uh, left tributary of uh, Southern Bug River, uh, Gordashivka, which uh, dates nearby 19, uh, thousand BP uncalibrated, uh, and uh, it's quite interesting because uh, it's mostly oriented on the flakes, not on blades. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, also we have a uh, second site on the Sna River, uh, it's uh, Obolonia, uh, which uh, has the prismatic uh, technology but uh, some features such as uh, nosed scrapers uh, can, can be uh, interpreted as epiorinian features. I, I ask because, because it's the same problem, for example, in Slovakia or in Czechia or mm -hmm. in the Czech Republic, because we use, so they use uh, this uh, terminology epiorinian, but in in my opinion, that is not very very good term terminology, because uh, it, it make 
thinking about uh, the, uh, genetic. The genetic, genetic relation. And in my opinion, it's impossible. There are some thousand years between uh, Orinacian and Epiorinian, yes. so-called yes. And our, uh, our um, uh, of course, the, there are not any relationship. And our Czech uh, friend say that the most uh, important important uh, feature are these uh, scrapers, this uh, some uh, some nose or uh, no scrapers or. Oh, oh. Doesn't matter. Karenia, Karenia. Yeah, Karen, Karenia. Is it English? Or no? Doesn't matter. Uh, could you say something about fireplaces in uh, in Mezirich? You you didn't you doesn't you, you didn't uh, talk about. Mm -hmm. And my question is. Could you see, for example, some uh, functional difference between uh, foyer uh, foyer places? Uh, in fact, in fact, uh, we have uh, for the moment we have one uh, hearth inside uh, dwelling four, and uh, but around the dwellings uh, we have uh, such called top talish it's uh, not my term it's term uh, by ivan pidoplichka and he thought that this top talish was the remains of otter hairs outside uh, firing uh, but in fact, uh, while we uh, continuously excavated uh, the Mezhirich uh, site, we understand that this Toptalisha, or uh, the um, most saturated by the uh, ash and charcoal uh, saturated uh, layers, which sometimes they are so powerful that uh, they uh, have 15 centimeters depth. And uh, this uh, layers was the uh, result of the cleaning of the dwelling. Uh, because uh, if we outside the dwelling, we have such powerful uh, ash and charcoal uh, deposits. But inside the dwelling, we have a clear floor. So they don't like the ash inside, inside their buildings. They permanently clean uh, their, uh, their houses. Uh, so uh, all that, what, I, what can I say? So for the moment, uh, I uh, not see the otter hearses. And we have only one in, uh, uh, inside uh, hers. It's very, it's very interesting because uh, you have so, so big uh, inside. So it's, yeah, it's interesting. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm glad that you are satisfied. <laughs> Thank you for presence, for listening. So we can finish. Goodbye to everybody.